Welcome to the number one source for information, news, and opinion on your Columbus Blue Jackets. This is CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. You can also find the audio version on the CBJ Radio SoundCloud page, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, Google Play Music, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Now here's your host, Bob McGilligan. Welcome to another CBJ and 30 presented by Tell Ohio Credit Union. The Blue Jackets continue their time in the NHL bubble in Toronto. They're going to get a chance to play a real game tomorrow. It'll be an exhibition game, but it's going to be a real game nonetheless. They'll take on the Boston Bruins at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, a game that I will have for you on the Blue Jackets radio network, starting with pregame coverage at 6.30 tomorrow evening. And the Blue Jackets are very much looking forward to playing in that game. John Tortorella said it the other day, they're looking to play somebody with a different uniform and just hit somebody for crying out loud. Get the puck, try to put it in the net behind another goalie. They will get that opportunity against the Bruins tomorrow night. And it's going to be a big opportunity and the only opportunity to get really tuned up for the play-in series against the Toronto Maple Leafs, which begins on Sunday. So we'll see what happens for the Blue Jackets uh, when it comes to that game and what they're able to do and how they're able to get it done. As a matter of fact, let's just give you a little uh, preview of that game. And the preview is being brought to you by Moo Moo Express Car Wash, home of the Unlimited Wash Club. The Boston Bruins, a couple of questions that they have uh, for them is that David Pasternak has not uh, been practicing. He was, he was exposed uh, to the coronavirus, so he hasn't been practicing. He's been in quarantine. Andre Kasha is another guy that is not even in the bubble with the Boston Bruins yet, which is important for them because Kasha is a guy, along with Nick Ritchie, that they picked up from the Anaheim Ducks before the trade deadline to try to bolster themselves. And they don't have his services right now from the things you read. They don't look like they're, they're that concerned about it, but you go out and get a guy via trade. You're concerned about it. You want to have him playing for you in the playoffs, especially when you're the top dog in the East. So as those situations develop, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it more. There's no doubt about it. We'll talk about, you know, how that will affect the exhibition game for the Bruins. They're playing that round Robin tournament, getting ready for the Stanley cup playoffs. So they have a little bit more time. Uh, They have a bit of leeway there with guys that uh, they don't have to have back in their lineup right away. Like the blue jackets, they have to have everybody ready to go on Sunday against the Toronto Maple Leafs. So again, with that time, the Bruins will utilize it to have everybody ready Uh, for the blue jackets. uh, They've got to be ready for Boston. Uh, They've got to be ready to show their best stuff because it's a final dress rehearsal before uh, they play. And for some, it is a final chance to make a good impression on John Tortorella and either get into the lineup or to get more time in the lineup for him. So uh, that's what's going on with that. Right now, I'm going to take you inside the NHL bubble. But before I do, see, it's gotten to the point where I'm not even going to try to read stuff anymore without putting my glasses on. I, I just, for those of you watching the video, I, I just put them on because I can't take it anymore. I either have to blow up the text so that I can do these reads I have to do, which I might do. I might blow it up so so I can actually see. But I, I don't know. It's just deteriorated to the point where I'm not going to battle it anymore. I'm just not going to do it. So I put on my glasses because I want to make sure that I get this right, although I get it right. of the time anyway. But I want to tell you about the fine folks at Telhio Credit Union who are the ones that bring you CBJ and 30. And you know what they're used to doing? They are used to putting people over profits. You know why they're used to doing that? Because they have been doing it since 1934. So there's no need, no reason, no good excuse for you to settle for a normal bank when you can have a credit union that will put you first. And that's what they will do at Telhio Credit Union. Go to their website, telhio.org. They have all the information right there. It is at your fingertips. Find out what they do that is right for you at Telhio Credit Union. Simple as that. Okay. Riley Nash is inside the bubble for the Blue Jackets. Riley Nash emerged as a really big part of the Blue Jackets playoff run last year. He got injured in the series against the Boston Bruins last season, and it made a difference. Because in the Tampa series, 
He was dialed in. He was playing fourth line center. He was contributing good defense, all of that stuff against Boston. He started that way. He got hurt when he left the lineup. The Blue Jackets were a different team. He's healthy, just like just about all of his teammates. He's healthy. He's ready to go, and he is ready to be a factor in what goes on in the playoffs. But right now, he's just trying to figure out how to live life in the NHL bubble. Right now, in our interview, presented by the Columbus Dispatch, here's Blue Jackets forward, Riley Nash. So, Riley, tell me about your very limited life in the NHL bubble so far. Uh, you know, it's something you guys talked about for weeks before going to Toronto, but now that you're in it, uh, what's it been like the, la- the first couple of days? You know, it's not, it hasn't been too bad. Um, usually life on the road, we're going to eat, coming back to the hotel, kind of hanging low anyway. It honestly, it feels like I'm back in, um, when I was like 12 on, on a team going to a hockey tournament. You know, guys have their Xboxes here. We go out for dinner, we practice, and then we hang out during the day. So it's uh, – it's kind of it's kind of nice. It's a pretty ideal situation for playoff hockey, where you just you really are thinking hockey and only th- hockey. So it's a uh, it's it's a pretty good setup so far. And my Xbox game has come a long way. <laughs> How much have you worked on that? Like when you found out you were going into a bubble, did you feel like that's a part of life that you had to get better at? Definitely, we have quite a few gamers on this team, and uh, my skills are definitely on the lower end of the spectrum for our squad. So. Um, I actually picked one up during quarantine because I was, I was trying to find things to do and I hadn't played Xbox or, or video games in probably seven, eight years. And so I'm still working off the rust, but, uh, the game's coming back and it definitely kills some time. What kind of games are you guys playing? Are you, are you playing sports games? Are you playing hockey or are you playing a, a variation of everything? Uh, the most popular right now is Call of Duty. So you can get, um, uh, teams together of like four guys, three guys, um, and I'll play on the same squad against other, other people around the world. So it's, we have our headsets so we can communicate from our own rooms. It's, it's, I mean, it's sad, but it's pretty addicting and and it actually, it's pretty fun. Yeah. That's a great description. It's sad, but pretty addicting. But all of this is kind of sad. I mean, you know, you're, uh, you're spending a lot of time, in a hotel room by yourself, you do get to interact with your teammates and stuff, but um, you know, it's got to be strange being in a place where, you know, there's certain things you can do and then you can't do and you just got to live with it. Right. Yeah. You just, you just got to adjust. Um, I think we've all kind of been in situations like this before, where whether we go on, you know, a two week road trip, you spend a lot of time at the hotel going out to eat, hanging with the boys. Um, so really it's it's honestly a good time for us to really get together uh it's like a crash course you you jump right into it you spend a lot of time together get close and uh once these games get going too you know it's going to be playoff intensity so the off days you're not going to really want to do anything that's uh going to burn energy so it'll be you know it's a pretty ideal situation you can just veg out at the hotel and i mean for me my wife's not here and so i can do Whatever I want, I don't have anyone uh, out dragging me around to different restaurants and whatnot. And so, I I mean, for guys with kids, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit of a shock to their system where they don't have to go go home to, you know, two, three kids. And and, uh, that definitely is is a struggle when you come playoff time. It just uh, taps into your energy reserve. So we're all in right now. This is kind of a John Tortorella dream in some ways because – he loves that camaraderie. I, I'm sure that he would love to put you guys together at the start of every playoff and have a have his own little bubble there. So I guess we're going to see how this all works out. But but in all honesty, I mean, it is great for you as a team. This is the time of the year where it is win or go home, and you've got to be all in. So, um, yeah, like you said, you're not getting a choice here. This is It actually is probably great, and to be honest with you, there are probably 23 other teams thinking the same way. Totally. Um, hopefully Torch doesn't hear that because he might have another idea up his sleeve uh, come next year's playoffs. But um, yeah, it's just, it's a very unique situation that everybody's in and, and it, it kind of helps being in a bubble like this where, you know, you're here for hockey and only hockey. And so it gets your mindset uh, right into that, that mode right away. Um, I know if you're at home and, and the weather's nice, you could be out doing a lot of other things, you know, your, your wife or kids want to go out and, you know, enjoy the fresh air, the sunshine, um, can kind of, your mind can kind of wander. So, 
um, being here. It's not like we're in prison, but we're, uh, we are definitely in a confined space and they're taking care of us, but it's, you're definitely reminded that you're here for hockey and, and, uh, it, it remains your number one focus, you know, the entire time. So, um, for me, it kind of helps things. I, I don't mind being here. I quite enjoy playing my Xbox and just chilling <laughs> and relaxing. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, you know, when teams go deeper, um, if guys start to get a little stir crazy or not, but for now it's been totally fine. Yeah. I'm sure at some point, uh, the mental aspect is going to come into play, but as you said, first couple of days, just like a, ro- a long road trip. So at least at this point you're used to it. Was there ever any question in your mind in the last couple of weeks or months, if you guys were ever going to get to this point, uh, even though there was a back to play plan and all of that stuff, um, because I'll be honest with you. I, when everybody would ask me, is hockey going to play again? I said, I'll believe it when I see it. And I don't mean that as any disrespect to, to the players union or to the ownership groups, but just looking what's going on, it was really hard to believe that you could get back to this point, but here you are and everything is going well so far. D- did you have any of those questions if you'd ever be able to get back there this year? Yeah, I think a lot of guys had, had questions. Um, yeah, there was just so much unknown going on and, how we were going to attack this. Was there going to be breakouts? What would they do? If guys started to get sick, what would they do? Would they just cancel it? Would they kind of truck ahead? Um, I think they've done a really good job, you know, with testing with the protocols in place. You know, you see, I don't want to, you see baseball who is having a tough time right now. Um, and then you see basketball who's done a fairly good job and seems similar to what we, what we're doing. So um, I feel like the league is, has, has, done a really good job of taking um our interests at heart you know we got a lot of guys that have kids and um, may have underlying issues uh, and so they really tried to look at every risk possible and, and try and you know give us the best chance at success you know on the ice off the ice in any in any situation possible so there was a time where he, you know, they kept pushing the date back week to week. And I was like, this, we're getting too deep into the summer. This is probably not looking too good, but, um, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad they were able to find a plan and and implement it in such a short period of time. And just feels great to have hockey back. And I'm sure people around Columbus and all the other NHL cities that are in it are probably pretty, pretty jazzed up to have it back too. So, um, it's nice to give back, you know, uh, a little bit to our fans and hopefully they can enjoy this ride as much as we will. And the biggest enjoyment of it for you guys is you're in the postseason. I mean, it's a play in round. You've got to beat Toronto to get into the round of 16, but you know, for a team that uh, everybody on the outside counted out after you lost the free agents that you did last summer and uh, felt that this was going to be uh, a rebuilding year, you know, you guys didn't feel that way. John Tortorella wouldn't let you feel that way. And he was very vocal about, uh, his feelings on that subject, but you know, how much pride is there for you and everybody else on that team that you're sitting there right now, that you are going to play beyond the regular season, no matter how long it took for that uh, beyond the regular season to finally take place, that you're there and that, that you've proven people wrong. And, uh, and you guys, you just seem like you've always excelled at playing the us against the world mantra. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely an interesting year. I know the expectations around the league weren't too high, but um, you get the leadership group that we have, um, veteran presence that we have in the room. Um, I don't think our expectations ever wavered. Um, I think we had the full confidence in, in everybody's abilities. You know, whether it was thinking about the guys that were leaving, that we felt that the guys that could step in that would get bigger roles, bigger minutes, could could fulfill that. Um, but it, you know, kind of like last year, it wasn't our top two lines that dragged us or got us through the first round. I felt like it was a full team uh, series win for us, and so I think that's that's one of those things where we took that, and um, you know, we lost a couple of guys. But you see, when a team comes together like that, how you know how special it can be. You know, we we knocked off probably one of the best teams to, in the regular season of all time. And uh, I don't think anyone had many expectations for us in that series either. So I think that's what's something that we um, drew upon throughout the year, whether it was we had eight, ten guys out of the lineup at any given time. It, it was just next man up mentality. And, you know, even the guys that 
are here but might not play or, or might watch a game or two, um, they could they could be right back in there again and, and we need to draw upon them uh, just like the regular season. So it's uh, the, the mentality of this team is something that I've really admired and uh, hopefully we can draw upon those experiences throughout the year uh, to get us through and, and really propel us however far we can, we can go. You know, it's funny, when I was looking at the final roster that was going to go to Toronto, when I looked at it, I knew every name. I knew how every guy played. And I'm sure that's not the case for most of the teams that are participating here in this tournament uh, because, you know, they added young guys or guys that were in the American Hockey League uh, or they're coming in from juniors. And, and I, I mean, even Liam Foody, he is the guy that played the least but at least he played. I mean, everybody that you guys took was a contributor in some way, shape, or form this year. That says two things. Number one, you had a lot of injuries. But number two, you're going into this with a group that is very familiar with each other, aren't you? Yeah, it's funny to see. Uh, and it wasn't just, you know, one or two games. I think Foods played two games. But other than that, everybody played substantial games, substantial minutes, um, had a really big, big part in getting us here. Um, I think that kind of helps us where we have a lot of guys, you know, whether you're trying to jump right into postseason um, intensity, that's, that's not easy to do. So, you know, if injuries happen, uh, if the legs aren't there, we have a lot of guys to draw upon. And I think that's a real plus in our side is guy, these guys have been in this situation before and they can draw on their experience from this year and, and the roles they had this year. And um, hopefully we can really excel because, you know, you know, every season come playoff time, there's always injuries. It's it's just part of the game. Everyone's sacrificing out there. So um, it's nice to have that depth that we have. And um, I know those guys this year have played hard, and, and they are definitely part of the team. They feel every bit as every bit as important as we are. So um, yeah, it's a it's a it's nice to have those everybody here, and just it's funny having the band back together. It's through at thirty strong, and we were all teammates for the entire year. So it's uh, you don't get that too often. Yeah, there's nobody in the second week of October that would have uh, asked me. I don't think any fan would have said, "How is Kevin Stenland not have a spot on this team?" But they're asking that now, right? Because what he did during the regular season, yeah. he and Nathan Gerby, uh, you know, they, they look like they might have to, to wait their turn. But you mentioned Liam Foody, or we both did here, and um, it looks like he's going to get an opportunity. And John Tortorella has had you on a line with him and Eric Robinson. So uh, for you, when you're playing between those two guys, uh, what is, uh, what's the biggest thing that you got to do? Catch them quickly out of the corner of your eye because they're so fast they're going to be gone? Yeah, I was I was thinking to myself. I think we were we were paired together for day one of training camp, and I'm like, we usually skate a lot in this practice. So this is not going to fare well for me. <laughs> yeah, he's chasing butts all, all practice. But uh, no, it's been good. You know, I just try and utilize their their uh, skills and their talents to the best of their ability, and, and try and make sure that you know we're not a liability. That we can be accountable on the ice, and we're going to do things the proper way. We're we're going to check hard um, and play that playoff mentality, playoff style hockey. Um, played with Robbie a lot this year and always enjoyed playing with him. So um, it makes things a little bit easier when I can just chip it out and let those two guys chase after it because uh, getting them in space with the puck in space, it always puts the team in under pressure with their speed. So um, definitely just try and use their their skills and their abilities to the best uh, uh, best ways possible. And hopefully we can, we can be really um, – strong defensively and, and you know I haven't played with foods much so just coming together as a unit and being able to read off each other um it's, you know the earlier the better is you know become natural just uh hopefully we can come together as a unit quickly we uh Jody Shelley and I talked with Liam last week on a show and he said that one of the things he's adjusting to is when he was in London they were playing kind of a man-on-man -man defense and here you guys play a zone type of a defense is that something that as a veteran guy in the middle uh, that you need to, to help him make those adjustments, whether it's a reminder or whether it's talking before or after, just those things to, to make sure that he doesn't uh, stray from that? Yeah, I think he'll have a lot of uh, coach's attention, just, just making sure that he's on, on point with uh, the, the little details. But that's an area that I can try and help him in is, is communicating in the D zone 
um, trying to cover up a mistake if something's made, uh, just reading off him because obviously he hasn't played that. It's, and I've been in that situation before, and it is uncomfortable. He, you might be in the right spot but feel like you're, you're totally in the wrong spot. So um, just talking with him, um, feeling out how, what he thought about a play, what he was reading on, the, on certain plays, um, letting him know where I'll be. Um, it's just a lot of communication early on and try and get him as comfortable as possible because it's it definitely is an adjustment our d zone and so um the faster he gets on the same page as as robbie and i then um then we'll definitely be more successful in the d zone so have you thought about the communication on the ice with not having any fans in the building about how different it's going to be maybe where, you know, guys are going to be able to hear you a lot easier, or maybe there are going to be guys wearing another sweater that you don't want to hear you and all that. Yeah. I think maybe a couple mothers might not be too impressed with their kids language, but uh, (laughs) yeah, I think it'll be a little bit easier to communicate Uh, to be honest in a game other than, you know, a big hit or a big play, you kind of hear the roar of the crowd, but it's, it's, it turns into just kind of white noise, a, a buzz in the air. Um, the thing we'll miss is kind of the energy before the game. Um, I know last year in the playoffs, we drew off the uh, Columbus the crowd's energy games three and four so much. It was the, I mean, the atmosphere was probably the best I've ever played in front. So that will be a little bit different, but I mean, this time of year, you don't really need any other ulterior motives. It's just, you know what you're playing for. So um, shouldn't be too hard to get up for games. So it'll be, it'll definitely be interesting as it's like going back 20 years for a lot of guys when, uh, we're in minor hockey and you know it's just your parents out there so um it'll be funny but uh, i think guys will kind of adapt as soon as possible and when your parents were there i mean you didn't hear them because even if they were yelling they were your parents you don't listen to them anyway (laughs) i blocked them out a long time ago (laughs) exactly no doubt you know i i was uh i've been saying you talked about what's going to go on on the ice in the way of talking um I was joking, only half joking. Could, could you imagine if there was a, a pay-per-view feed that you could pay to watch the game and actually get the what's happening on the ice with, here at all? Could you imagine that? I feel like some players would have a lot of subscribers for, <laughs> for some weird reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that would definitely be entertaining. They, they, I know that fans always want the inside access. They're, oh, there's the perfect time to do it. But, um, you know, we're always under the – the microscope and everything we say is scrutinized now. So I think it's probably best that we're on a time delay. And yeah. <laughs> we put a couple of things out. Unfortunately, I, I agree with that. Although I'll tell you, I have asked that because I, I was told that the feed that I get into my headsets, I can get the, the simulated crowd noise or not. And I've asked not to have it because I would very much rather hear what is being said. But, but some of that stuff, because I, I'm afraid of what I'm what I'm going to be able to see. I don't know what I'm going to be able to see and how different it's going to be from actually being at the game. Yeah. So I, I think some of that stuff, like you're like you're talking about, when you're communicating on the ice with your teammates, uh, I think to hear that could be helpful to me, and I think it'd be really interesting too. I, I guess that's what that's the kind of thing. I understand you don't want to put the stuff out to get you guys in trouble, but I think from a fan standpoint. Uh, if they could hear that stuff, that would be really interesting because it, the people you come across that don't like hockey, for lack of a better term, as you know, it can be a hard game to understand. I know uh, some of the people that, that like it now that didn't like it before that I know, they didn't understand two things, icing and offside. As soon as you understand that, it's a heck of a lot easier to understand the game, right? Yep. Uh, why the ref is blowing the whistle when he blows it is well you still don't know that sometimes right you question him why are you doing that that's when that's when some of the sound bites might get a little <laughs> a little colorful <laughs> yeah totally uh, i think it's a i think it's a fabulous game i think this is a great time for us to market it i think this is it's really nice that we're able to play and fans can enjoy it again and get a little bit of normalcy back in their lives um yeah, I'm not sure how you're even going to call the game. Are you just watching the overhead cam and trying to decipher okay. who is who by the way they skate, the way they – Yeah. Know, you know, if it's me, I'm probably going to be chipping it into the, the ozone. <laughs> if it's another guy, he might skate it a little bit more. So those are some dead giveaways. But it's – hopefully we can we can market the game to the, the population that hasn't watched a ton of hockey and um, – maybe learn a little bit. I know sometimes it looks, looks kind of silly why we're doing things out there and having someone explain or, or know the thought process and 
how fast the game moves, how hard it is to be on on skates and then have a stick extended, trying to handle a puck, guys coming to put you into the third row. It's just a lot of complex things that uh, hopefully, you know, that we can draw on a little bit more, more uh, market and expand the game. Totally agree. I, I, I think that that opportunity is tremendous for this league right now. The last thing I want to ask you about, and then I'll let you go, is uh, the game against Boston. Uh, you get one shot to actually get ready for the postseason games that you're going to play. What do you expect the intensity to be like against the Bruins in this tune-up? I would expect it to probably be like a regular season game, maybe with 20 games to go. I think the intensity will be there. I think it'll be interesting to see how how crisp everything is for the first period, maybe first 30 minutes. And then I think things will kind of settle into place again. I know – when you first get back out on the ice, it's a little bit of a learning curve of where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, the timing wise. And then it kind of turns into this whole, you know, play where everybody's kind of in sync. So it's going to take some time to get that back, but you know, it's, it's just, that's probably going to be the deciding factor on who's successful in these first, first rounds or not is who can get back into that groove as quickly as possible. But I, I think the intensity will be there. I think they're going to be, uh, well, we definitely are ramping up for a big series against Toronto, and, and uh, I know their guys, they're always competitive, so I, we're not worried about um, that. I think I think it'll be a really – I think all these playing games or these exhibition games are going to be really, really great. They did a good job with the rivalry, so, um, you know, we're, everybody's trying to get up to that level as fast as possible, so there's no no messing around right now. Riley, thank you very much. It's uh, great to see you, great to talk with you. And uh, I hope you have a great time there in the bubble. And by the way, I hope you're there for about two months or so. I can't wait to see your beard in two months. It's going to be strong. Good to catch up with Riley Nash, see what he's doing in the bubble and get his perspective on things. Uh, you know, earlier I was talking about wearing glasses. Riley Nash had the glasses on and he looked very scholarly. So I'm going to put mine back on so I too can look scholarly. Uh, but again, Riley is, he's a really important part of what's going on here because not only can he solidify a fourth line, he can jump up in the lineup. He can get more minutes if uh, that's what is warranted. And he is also, as we talked about, he's trying to help out two young wingers, especially the rookie, Liam Foody. Uh, it could be very important to Liam to have a guy like Riley Nash on his line and helping him uh, through the motions, especially when it comes to the way the Blue Jackets play in the defensive zone. So I really appreciate uh, Riley taking the time to talk with me and to talk with you here on today's show. And he's the kind of guy I would bug again. Uh, you know, he, he's got that professor look to him like he knows everything. And he's, uh, he, he's great. He's got a great sense of humor. And uh, he might be somebody I lean on as far as finding out what is going on in the bubble as we continue here. Right now, let's take a look at the stats and leaders, which is being brought to you by Franklin University. Franklin makes it possible, and we have no playoff stats yet, so I'll just tell you about the regular season. The points leaders for the Blue Jackets during the regular season, Pierre-Luc Dubois sat atop the leaderboard with 49 points in the 70 games the Blue Jackets played this year. Right behind him, Gus Nyquist, seven back. He had 42 points. Zach Wierenski checked in third with 41. Of course, 20 of those came through goals off the blue line for Zach Wierenski. Oliver Bjorkstrand, a couple of stints of injury, held him down to 36 points. Nick Foligno uh, was fifth on the team with 31 points, just one better than Seth Jones. Cam Atkinson had 26 points on the regular season. Again, he was hurt. He missed a lot of time. Cam Atkinson, uh, there's a lot of press on him right now. A lot of stories being written about how important it could be for him to be a significant part of what the Blue Jackets are trying to do here. If they are going to have success, they could use a guy like Cam Atkinson. So we'll see if he's able to bring it. He's saying the right things. Uh, in practice, he's doing the right things. Can he translate that into goals? Can he translate that into points? That's something we're going to find out here over the next couple of weeks. But uh, it's exciting because tomorrow there's actually going to be a hockey game. It's not going to be a game that counts for any points. It's not going to be a game that gets you one step closer to advancing in the Stanley Cup playoffs, but it's going to be a game, the Blue Jackets playing against another team, and this team will be the Boston Bruins. Again, that game is going to be at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. All of the pregame coverage starts at 6.30 on the Blue Jackets radio network. And I also want to remind you that the Inside Edge is going to air tonight, this show uh, coming your way on Wednesday. 
uh, Wednesday, the 29th of July. Just checking to make sure I have all my dates right. I, I was given some copy of some things I had to do uh, this week for, you know, people in the office and they had the wrong dates on the stuff. And I was like, come on, man. So I can't mess it up now, right? If I'm going to if I'm going to be on somebody else to get it right, I've got to be right. So this is Wednesday, the 29th, and the Inside Edge will air tonight on the flagship station of the Blue Jackets Radio Network, 97.1 The Fan in Columbus. You can also get it on the Blue Jackets app and at bluejackets.com. We are scheduled to have defenseman Zach Wierenski join us on that show. I'll be with Jody Shelley uh, on the Inside Edge when it comes your way a little bit later on. So that will do it for today's edition of CBJ and 30 presented by Tell Ohio Credit Union. Tomorrow, it'll be a game day edition of the show. I cannot wait. Until then, I'm Bob McElligot saying so long.